Welcome back to another FNA. This is part 11 and the last part of the most common animation mistakes. And today it's all about polish. Polish is tricky if you don't have enough time to get there. And this is why I recommend to my students to keep their shots short. Three to five seconds, five to seven. 10 is kind of long, anything after 10 is very difficult to get to. And you do want to get to the end where you really get into the nitty gritty, the frame by frame, all those little extra details that are going to make that shot really work and sing. And what am I talking about? Well, let me show you. Your animation shouldn't be something where imagine your animation looks like one car and then your polish looks like another car. It should technically be your blocking tells the whole story. Everything is there, all the information, all the story beats and the timing and the acting choices. And that represents, let's say a dirty car but when you get to polish you're gonna just add the final detail and as the name says you're gonna polish it it's the same car just clean and polished so polish really means that you're gonna go into your animation and detail the things out frame by frame it's tedious work but it's necessary you're in control of your character so don't let the computer do the things for you you have to decide what the breakdowns are and what the in-betweens look like. And speaking of which, if you have the shot, I showed this before in a previous FNA, but if you look at this blink, you can see that it's all very even in terms of how it opens and closes. What are you going to do in polish? If I move forward here, you're going to have one side that's going to be slightly offset. The ease in is going to be ever so slightly different. And you can see that there's an offset in these two eyes. You have this part that's a bit more open than this section here. And you don't want to repeat this on the same side. You can always change that into opening it up on this side. If you go a step further, this is just the eyes for a previous example, but if you have something closing like this here, you probably want to go in there and add a little bit of influence in the brows. Depending on how the action is when you have a dialogue and you open the mouth here, you can see that only this section is influenced. But you're gonna to have to think about, well, if I wanna do more, you might have to go in there and just move a little bit of that tip of the nose and you have a controller, you can also look at moving more of that. Same thing if you have a smile and this goes up. Now this is built into the rig as you can see where the cheeks go up. But if you wanna do this and you really think about the influence of the cheek, all of this is going up and is pushing the skin and the flesh up there. So what you can do is also move this part of the skin up a bit. Let's go to another example, let's say feet. So one of the common things is that if your character takes a step or moves the foot, what people do is they activate the foot roll, right? So you're gonna have a foot roll, sure. But what if the character is actually moving this way? This is what I see a lot of times is that the students just activate the foot roll. So again, if you look at this, this feels slightly off because you do have a force that goes this way. The character is going this way, but there's a bit of a break in this pose. So what you can do is either you take that and you swivel it out so you have a bit more of a nicer curve, so it's not so broken, and it also depends on the camera angle, but that will have a nicer flow. The body is pulling this way, so this backside of the foot is going to go this way as well. But technically you can do more. If that force really goes to the right, you can start adding like a side roll like this. And if you want more compression on the foot, you're gonna take the toe control and you bring it back down. And depending on the pressure of the foot, you might even have to add a little bit of a squash. So now you have this force of the body going over. It takes the foot with it a little bit. There's a slight pivot, but there's still pressure on this. And if you do a squash, you can feel that that pressure goes down. So all of this section is still pushing down while the rest is being taken by the body. And that's a lot of lines here. And same thing goes for hands. So let's say I have this character and with this rig, you can change it. So if I select this back here, you can change it to the handspring, right? But let's pretend that this is an, a transformation that the character wants to go through and it's kind of signaling to the audience. Well, you wouldn't just do this and then move the hand at the same time to potentially a different position. In polish mode, what I would do is that your fingers would have a slight relaxation, almost as an anticipation, and then tighten again for then the spring to change in this arm. But then the other thing is that you wouldn't just do this on this control where everything's moving at the same time. You're gonna have to go in there and take two separate controllers and start moving and offsetting fingers a little bit. So it's not just all together, but potentially the thumb might relax first to give the other fingers room to get out of there. And again, all of these would move at the same time. You would start offsetting these by a couple of frames, maybe one, maybe even two, depending on how much you just signal this. Also depends, do you see it like this or do you see it like that? <laughs> That's a weird pose 
from my previous tweak here. But you have to think about, well, how much do I need to polish depending on the view? If this is this far, you're gonna have to push it a bit more, maybe push the offset a bit more. But if it's like this, then you can have a lot more subtle stuff in there. So even your shoulders might react a little bit as this arm changes to a spring, and it might have a little bit of a, a little change in there. And if you're gonna be super detailed, and again, I will put this into the polish, is that if your arm changes and that propagates into the shoulder, well, if you have a little bit of shoulder movement, then you're definitely gonna have to have a little bit of body movement. And because of that, your head might also change a little bit, just a little bit. Now the general move of an arm moving and affecting the rest of the body, that to me is just part of body mechanics. So the biggest change is going to be in here, and then there's gonna be some fall off where it's gonna move a lot more here, a bit less here, really a bit less here, and so on and so on. It's gonna fan out. That being said, you can still add all of this in the polish phase with really, really tiny moments. What if this is a really, really big moment and with the arm and the transformation, then you can still take your controls in the eye and have a slight, maybe a little bit of a blink, a little bit of a squint on the side. All those details, and I can't get over this pose here, all those details are gonna make the animation just feel a bit more special. There's just a bit more influence than just having this arm go from this to this. And this doesn't always have to be contained to characters themselves. So what I did a long time ago here with this test is that with this walker, I wanted to do a walk cycle and I wanted to do those spiky claw feet, or whatever you want to call them. I wanted them to interact with the ground. So I started adding details like here, where I would animate geometry frame by frame and add a little bit of a it's almost like a bouncing ball rock that will copy, paste, and scale for scratches and debris that would move. So if you play this again, you can see the different little scratches as the character goes forward. There's another view here where you can see the lines. So depending on how I move this, I have little scratches there. And even the underside that is somewhat spiky, which is here, these little things. So as it compresses, they create pa -pa! little holes in here. So these spikes, when the foot comes down, you can see how they hit and then they create that little hole in there. And seeing this here, this offset, I can go back to that rig. The other thing that I see is when people do a plant on the foot, so there's a step and take the front view here. When they have this here, they're going to put the foot up and they're ready to land like this and take the foot down over maybe two or three frames, depending on, on the step harshness but what i would recommend and let's move the character again to illustrate this if you do a weight shift let's pretend that your leg is more like this right there's a slight angle like that in the leg and generally i would do this even if there's no dramatic angle like this but when your foot goes down it doesn't go down like that i will have a contact point that is slightly like this so if i add a ground plane and select this again you can see that here is the intersection so i would do a contact point like this and over the course of two frames it will go down and compress like that. But then of course you have to look at the offset. So if this is your touch point, this will be your pivot. So as the foot goes down, you wanna make sure that your foot has a slight move so that you can feel that when this happens, there is a little bit of a move there. So it still compresses, but it pivots off that left side. But again, something like this, I would have in your initial pose for your blocking. So if that's the angle of the foot, you have to make sure that, well, it has to influence the rest of the leg so that it's not like this. So you don't have this break in the pose where it's a bit too harsh. Here's a shot that I did a long time ago. What is this, probably 11 years ago? Something like that. So another example where I go kind of nuts, and this is something I think I'm gonna post later on Twitter. I just actually found a progress reel. But you have this where, and this is a longer shot, but when you have the bird coming in, I just go nuts because I have fun doing this. So this is just the play blast of the elements of the set as the character goes up and then the bird comes through. So there's a little bit of camera move in there, but you have a bit of drag overlap in those little leaves as it comes up, depending on the move. And then as the bird comes in, you can see that frame by frame, I animated the vertices. You have these guys moving here and imagine the main force comes through here. So all of that is going to go this way in terms of the wind and the power and the influence. So I have these leaves moving first and then it kind of goes over into this way, into here and all fans out this way. And then of course you got the human as we frame through here, <laughs> crazy poses. 
as he tries to hold on to this you can see some of those scratches in the sand which is this section here so these are just geometry spheres i can't remember what i did here but i just frame by frame moving into which is then spinning i animated this and i just have a lot of fun animating those details let's go back here when you see the leaf moving and again everything that's being influenced by the bird and all of that good stuff at the end this is something that i showed last time but i always show this to my student as an example of what you have to put in into your blocking pass not everything's animated sometimes the lip sync is not there at all but everything is there that conveys the right idea the acting choices and the attitude but let's go to another example. When you have a finished shot, you have to ask yourself, did you really put in all those details on every frame into your poses? The offsets, the asymmetry, the line of acumen in the face. And if you take this shot, and we'll put a link in the description with this fantastic shot, you can basically stop on any frame and see the detail that's put in in every pose, especially on the hands. So you can see this here. You can go any frame, everything is posed out. <laughs> beautiful again the poses are great you can stop on any frame and you can tell this animator really took the time to just pay attention to everything there's a squish in the cheek look at that i can randomly go onto every frame and it's absolutely awesome so i highly recommend that you check out this shot there's some really awesome animation work in there and a great example of how far you can go in your polish just in terms of again facial poses and hand poses for the whole range of the shot that just makes it such a delight to watch there you go last part for now i might add more things as time goes on but so far these are the most common ones there is one more technically that's about ik stuff but i want to fold that into an ik versus fk separate fna so to speak so i would say that would be a part 12 i'm going to add that to that playlist but I want to make that a separate thing just about IK versus FK. I don't know how I can segue from IK versus FK to that, but if you feel like this was helpful and you liked it and you want to incorporate all those ideas into your shots, I have workshops. Link in the description, as always, you can sign up at any time. And if you like this, you can hit the like button, of course, and you should hit the subscribe button and that bell button to get all the vacations because you don't want to miss any of my uploads. Don't want to. Other than that, if you're still watching, I will say thank you because you are very patient and I will see you in my next upload.